Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. I want to show you around some jazz charts and explain to you what the different symbols mean. So uh, let's get to a close up and we'll just get stuck straight in. So the tune that I'm going to take you through, first of all, is uh, one of my favorites. It's called Alice in Wonderland. Beautiful uh, tune. This makes a really nice chord melody. Uh, great song. Um, so the things that you want to watch out for when you first get a chart, uh, first thing is probably the time signature. Now time signature is written here at the beginning of a chart and it'll tell you how many beats there are in a bar. This particular one's in 3-4, so in each bar of music there's going to be three beats. More common in pop and blues and stuff is 4-4, four, four, so four beats in the bar, but you might also see stuff like 6-8 or 12-8 or uh, in more complicated fusion stuff you might see even weirder combinations. Um, if you want some more information on time signatures, go and uh, look it up on my website. So that's the first thing, very, very important. Uh, second thing is tempo. Um, this one here's got an indication, it says medium tempo. Now medium is definitely subjective. Medium is could be anything depending on whether you really like fast music or slow music. Um, so I would recommend that you make sure you listen to the songs, at least a few different versions of every song before you start trying to learn it. Uh, very often in the real book you'll have a version. Now this one here down the bottom has got uh, Bill Evans' Sunday at the Village Vanguard, which is a fantastic jazz record that I would strongly recommend that you get uh, anyway. But you'll often find that uh, the particular, that's probably the version that they uh, transcribed this off to write it out. So it's probably likely that the melody is going to be very similar to uh, that Bill Evans version there. So uh, sometimes I'd have a few different versions that I'd check out written at the bottom of the chart there. So uh, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, may, yeah, it's fi finding out the tempo. The next thing that you would look at would probably be the key signature. Now, uh, it's normally written here just before the uh, time signature, but uh, this particular Alice in Wonderland is in the key of C, so uh, we don't have a key signature. So if I just get this other chart up here, this is a song called Blue Bossa, another very common uh, jazz song. You'll see here, right at the beginning after, there's a treble clef first of all, uh, and then you'll find that three flats, which is telling us what key we're in. That's saying that we're in the key of E flat. If you're not familiar with your key signatures, you're going to need to learn that if you're getting into jazz, because uh, you can't read the melody unless you know the key signature. Uh, again, you probably want to check out my uh, ebook called Practical Music Theory, available on the website. If you don't understand your keys and key signatures, you're going to have to check that out if you're going to get into jazz. So that's a, uh, a key signature. So uh, back to Alice in Wonderland, let's just talk a little bit about some of the other things that you've seen here. So we've got the title, we've got the speed of the tune. Up here normally we'll have uh, who wrote the song, okay, the names of the composers of the songs. Um, now the first symbol that you're going to see is this little kind of thick line, thin line, little ears and two dots. Now uh, they don't normally have the little ears if it's a normal conventional printed sheet music. Um, handwritten charts will often have that. That's the uh, repeat sign. And uh, so if we continue to scan through the music, we're, we're playing along like this, we're playing along like this, playing along like this, uh, we get to this, oh, what's this funny one here, okay? So this kind of thing is, a, it's called a first time bar. And you can think of it like a gate that only lets you in the first time, okay? It's a gate that only lets you in the first time you come to it. So as you're playing along the music, you come to it and you go, oh, it's the first time. It goes, is it the first time you've been here? And you go, yep. So you keep going. Oh, and then you hit this repeat sign. Now, this is a repeat sign as well. Looks very similar to that one that we had up there, except the eyes, the two dots are pointing back the other way. So when you get to that repeat sign, you go back until you find the opposite eyes, okay? And you'd play from there. So from this song, you'd play through here, through the second line, through the third line. You come to the gate and go, yeah, it's my first time here. You get to the repeat, you go back to the repeat. Then you play through. And then the next time you come through, you reach the first time bar, the first gate. And it won't let you in because you've already been there because that was for the first time. So you jump over that and you'll play the second time bar and you'll play that. And then you'll continue your way through the rest of the time, the rest of the chart. So it's very important you get this first time and second time bar. Very, very common thing in jazz, right? So just think of it like a gate, like that's the first time. And you're allowed to play it if it's the first time. And there'll nearly always be a, well, nearly always, always be a repeat there. So uh, first time, repeating back somewhere else, play through. Second time, you've got to jump that and play the second time. Sometimes you can have a third time, a fourth time. Sometimes you have alternate endings. So you're allowed to play this one the first time and the third time, and this one the second time and the fourth time, that kind of thing. So just have a look in the number there, and that's telling you what time you're allowed in to that particular little area. 
very, very, very important, uh, that, uh, that stuff. Now, uh, little other little things here, fine, f it looks like fine, but it's pronounced fine is the ending of the tune, so the very last time you play it, you'll finish at the end of that bar. Um, now I'm going to put up another chart for you to have a little look at the, uh, this uh, DSL coder thing, which is a, another very important uh, thing to look at uh, when you're learning your jazz charts. This is another very famous jazz song called Black Orpheus. Um, again, we'll see here that it's got it written here, Bossa, so it's written the style there instead of the, the, the tempo. It's got the author of the song here, the composer, the title. Um, uh, we're in the key of C again, we're actually in the key of A minor, which is relative to C. Um, but we've got this funny little squiggle here, right? It looks like kind of like a funny S with a line and two dots. Uh, that's called dust squiggle. That's the technical term for it. Actually, that's not true. It's called dust signal. Uh, but I call it the squiggle, the squiggle, yeah? Uh, we're going to talk about the squiggle in a minute. But uh, you can see we're just playing through the tune. We're in 4-4. Four, four. We're playing through the tune, blah, 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 blah. And uh, we get round to the end of the tune here. And there's no repeat or anything, but it says DS Alcoda. So DS Alcoda means go to the squiggle, to Dal signal or the sign, okay? Go to the sign until the coda, and then it's got this little, what looks like the, uh, a rifle crosshairs, okay? So when you get to that, you go back to the squiggle, which is here, okay? So it, it would be just missing out that first part, but to see the, the squiggle can be anywhere in a chart. But uh, in this case, it's almost at the beginning, but not quite at the beginning. Um, so when you get to the squiggle there, you play through. But this second time, when you're playing through, you get here, when you hit this uh, crosshairs here, right? So we're going to miss out that last bar. You would jump to this crosshair, okay? And you would play that ending. The coda is kind of like the ending or an extra bit added to the song, okay? So here it's saying, Go to the DS alcoder. Go to the squiggle until the crosshairs. So at that point, you finish the tune, you go back to the squiggle, you play through until you get to the crosshairs, in which case you jump to the other crosshairs, which will be written just underneath. It's never written anywhere else, uh, or maybe it could be on the next page, but wherever the next uh, little gun sight is. Uh, and then you would play that last little part there, and you've got a fine at the end. Uh, that's just a page number, and that's telling you that there's a, a great Wayne Shorter version that you might want to check out of this song. So uh, that's explaining that DSL coder. Now I just pulled up this other chart as well, just to give you an idea of the kind of uh, dodgy looking charts that you'll see sometimes, and it's got a few other things that are worth having a look at as well. Um, so we've got, uh, the first thing to notice is there's a, some kind of random lines going on down the side of the page, which makes it pretty hard to read. And that's the kind of thing that you see in these kind of real books that are a bit uh, hand-drawn, that, that you often get them a bit mucked up or over photocopied, uh, you know, which is how they've uh, made their way over the last 40 or 50 years. Um, this one's actually got a tempo marking, so it's got a like crotcher equals 60, and then it says funky, okay? Uh, it's giving you the chords up the top here. Uh, it's giving you this little thing that looks like a percentage sign, which means repeat the previous bar. So that's an F7, and that's saying, well, play F7 again. And now we've got another one which is just really badly written, which looks like our percentage sign, but it's got two lines along with the dots, okay? And that re means repeat the last two bars. So here it's got F7, but it's also got a quite specific rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four. That's the rhythm that you're playing the F7 for, and you're doing F7, F7 again, then repeat the last two bars. So that's where that you get that little percentage sign thing, quite common. Again, here we've got F7, it's in brackets, meaning, oh, we've still got F7. Uh, it's got four lines there just showing us that we're in 4-4. Four, four. It's got the little percentage sign thing, meaning to repeat that the percentage time thing again. And now we've got an instruction, which is also very common in kind of jazz fusion. It says stop time. So it's just saying that we're going to stop there with the rhythm groove. Um, and we've got this cool little melody thing here. Um, we've got now it's changing into a medium bossa. So we've gone from funky to a medium bossa. A lot more complicated to tune this, you can see. Even the melody looks a lot more complicated. We're playing through here. Uh, there's a repeat sign there that we need to make sure that we uh, clock as we're reading through the tune. So we're playing through this thing, we're playing through this. Oh, we've got a first time bar. Okay, so the first time we play through that, and then we keep going, forget all of this, this is just extra stuff that shouldn't really be in the chart. 
We're going to play through here, play through here. Oh, there's the repeat sign. So we're going to repeat all of the way back to that. Okay? And then we're going to play through the chart, play through the chart. Oh, we come to the first time bar. We're not allowed to play the first time bar. That only lets you in the first time. So we can't use any of that. So we jump all the way down to here. Now, just because I'm fairly experienced reading charts or whatever, I'm pretty sure there's a two under there. And that and it's kind of given away by that little line there. So that's where the second time bar starts. But you can get the idea of how these older charts can be a bit dodgy and hard to read. Uh, they're fairly easy if you listen to the song. Again, you should be listening to all of this music, not just reading it. So, uh, you know, if you're listening to it, you'll probably figure it out as well. So we've got the second time bar. We're playing along there. We notice we've got a coda sitting there, but it hasn't told us anything about it yet. So we keep playing through. Keep playing through, keep playing through, we've got one of those repeat signs, keep playing through. Then we've got open solo on F7, which is, I guess, as long as you like on F7, that's pretty cool, guitar players like that really long solo thing. And then we've got our old friend DS Alcoda. So we go back to the sign until the coda. So we look at, back at the tune and we go, oh, there's the sign up here. So it wasn't quite at the start, it was coming in here. So again, we'd play through. We observe all of those things, so first time through we're allowed because we're repeating the song again. You're allowed in that first time bar. Sometimes you'll see stuff in here like DSL coder take second time bar will be written as an instruction in the music, in which case you'd play through it and you, you wouldn't take the first time bar, you'd jump straight to the second time bar. But uh, in this case we'd take the first time bar, go back to the repeat which was there, play through, stop at the first time bar, jump to the second time bar, playing through, but this time when we get to the coda, we would jump down here to the coda and play that little part and that would be the end of the song. You can see that's a pretty complicated chart, right? Hasn't got any time changes, it could have had that, it hasn't got any key changes either by the looks of things, but it's a fairly complicated chart and the best thing, best way to learn to, to read these sort of charts is to get yourself a real book and look through as many as you can and make sure you follow the form. It won't take you very long, I promise, it won't take as long as you think to learn how to follow a jazz chart. Now don't let yourself get all scared, right? I've seen lots of students where the first time, few times they see a jazz chart, they're like, oh, it's too complicated, there's all of this stuff going on. It's not complicated. It just takes a little bit of getting used to, and the best way to do it is get yourself a real book and just open it up and have a look at a tune and follow the form through. Okay, get used to looking at where those repeat signs are, what they look like. You know, if you've got yourself the new real book, that branded one, uh, then it's typeset and it's a lot better written. It's, it's clearer. The structures are a lot easier to read than those charts I was just showing you there. They, they're from the original real book, which is, you know, very sloppily written. You know, it's, it's, it's a classic. A lot of people like it, but it's, you know, it can be difficult to follow some of those songs. So, uh, you know, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'd recommend that you get the old real book and the new real book so that you've got the best of both worlds. That would be my recommendation. I do really recommend that you get the actual books themselves because, you know, going through and writing out in your forms and later on when we get into this harmonic analysis, it's a really good idea to have it with you. And uh, if you get into the loose pieces of paper, they're easy to lose. And there's something special about the books. You know, I, I love that I've got all my old books where I was learning my first things about jazz and harmony. So uh, I really, I'm a, I'm a big believer in uh, sticking with the book, you know, if you can, and uh, get yourself a, a hold of a real book. There's links on the website, so uh, go and check them out. I'll uh, see you for more jazz lessons very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.